quick uh, fix up from last class. We were talking about this case study and comparing uh, mutually exclusive alternatives, and there was just two minor uh, things on the slide that were incorrect that didn't impact the, the uh, final result, but still will help you. That 4,500, you may have that uh, as 1,500, so just correct that. That's the difference then between option B and option C. And then the NPV here for the incremental investment uh, was recorded the correct number. I just had a minus sign over there, so uh, just take that minus sign away. It's positive. Okay, so let's uh, let's take go to the next topic. And I'd like you to talk with the person next to you and answer this very broad, maybe vague question. Analysis might adjust itself. 
So another way to say that is what if? What if my product price changes? How is that going to impact my economic analysis that we've looked at so far? We've spent five weeks developing these spreadsheets with cash flows over multiple periods of time. And we calculated NPVs, DCFRRs, and, and added them up. The NPVs, we've added them up and the, the cumulative net, net present value. But today we're saying we're going to pull all that together and say, well, what, how is that all going to change if the sales price changes, or if the cost of energy in my, my facility changes, or if my lifetime for a project changes, um, or my feed materials, my raw materials change? So those are just a few. Other other costs that might change that we spoke of last time that you recall? Other variables that really might impact us? Interest rates? Perhaps? Utility costs, raw material costs? Sorry? Piping or materials? The materials, the, the capital costs. New policies or regulations? New policies or regulations that come in that will impact you? Exchange rates. Okay, so we mentioned a few of those last time. You'll recall that discussion we had at the end of the class. So today we're going to try and take that and quantify it in some way. And we, put, we perform in what's called a sensitivity analysis. If you're interfacing with anyone in a management or financial role in your company in the future, you will have to present a sensitivity analysis to them. This is one thing they will certainly ask for. Because at the end of the day, they're going to approve the money. You're proposing the project. Neither one of you wants to be in a position where you come five years later and say, oh shit, this didn't work out, okay, and be in trouble for it. Neither of you wants to lose that face in your company or that risk of that happening. And so how can we try to at least get some quantifiable way of measuring that risk. And that's what the sensitivity analysis is going to do. And we're going to pick parameters that have the greatest uncertainty. These are the things that we're really not quite sure about. Remember, so far in the cash flows, we put our best guesses forward into that spreadsheet of what the incomes are going to be, what exchange rates are going to be, these utility costs. But we know from the whole discussion up to now, that everything in that spreadsheet is uncertain, especially the capital cost. There's such huge error, plus or minus 40% in the, in the capital cost estimates. But at the end, we want to be sure, let's say that there's that 40% error in the capital cost estimates. Does it matter? Okay. Is it going to matter? Is there maybe another uncertainty that's going to swamp the uncertainty in capital costs? Might be might be another way of looking at it. Okay, so we're going to look and see, will our key conclusions change? Are you still going to make the decision to go ahead with that project or not, despite this risk, despite this uncertainty of the future? Okay, and if your conclusions change, then you're going to then select a different decision or pick the decision that's least sensitive to those uncertainties. So here's how we do it. It's very straightforward. We plot on the vertical axis, the NPV, as a function of the parameter we're uncertain about. So here on my horizontal axis is my sales price. That product I'm going to sell in Argentina, what value did most groups get? Around $15 a kilo? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, you found in that assignment that selling it for $15 a kilogram got you an NPV of zero dollars. That was the purpose of that assignment for three. So $15 a kilogram gets you NPV of zero dollars. So you're over there on that axis. If I increase the price of that product, so now I go to $16, which way is NPV going to go? Look up, for sure. So $16 might be there, $17, $18, $19, if I went down, I'm going to make negative NPV. I'm not breaking either. Okay, so we can plot this curve then of sales price versus NPV. Key assumption: keeping everything else fixed. 
that's up there in, in the brackets with all other parameters constant. Exchange rates are constants, all materials, salaries, capital costs, all of those are constant. Remember, they have to be because we need those numbers to calculate NPV. So NPV is a function of a huge number of variables. All those things that went into the spreadsheet are used to calculate NPV. The time, the 10 year period that we've used is, a, is, one, is one of the variables. The raw material costs, the utility costs, the capital costs, all of those are then used and make up this NPV. And if we vary just the single parameter, sales price up and down, we get this linear curve. It's not always linear, but in this case it is linear. So we obviously don't go sell our product for $15 a kilogram. We don't want to be operating just at that break even point. We're going to choose some other number. Let me say over here, $24 a kilogram as, a, as an example. This is going to be my base case and for future study. So I, I will maybe pick this, I'll get to this value of 24 in consultation with other people in my company. We'll decide that $24 a kilo is where we want to operate our process. And that's our point where we're going to do our sensitivity analysis around. We're going to ask, is our process still profitable up to this low point? So basically, this is our room to move. This is our judgment of the risk. And so coming back to this idea of what is our risk, this differential of $9 a kilogram tells me I've got that much room to move my sales price and still make a profit. Below that, I, I can't go. Or unless I'm willing to go lower, um, I'm going to be making a loss. Okay, so this is how we quantify risk. So let's come and give an actual example to an economic situation that occurred four or five years ago when people lost housing in the United States because they weren't able to pay for their mortgages and to some extent in Canada. What happened there in that situation? What was the triggering event? What was the risk factor that came into effect? Okay, so the value of the house dropped significantly, but what, why, what, what spurred this all off? Right, so, this, of course, so being able to sell your house is one thing, but why did they have to sell their house? Because uh, they had 0% down payments, and as a result, people were buying houses they couldn't really afford. People were buying houses they couldn't afford. So, if you cannot pay your mortgage payment, the bank comes and asks for it back. That money that you have to pay every month, say $800 a month that you're paying the bank for your mortgage. That's what people didn't put here. They didn't do a sensitivity analysis, either on paper or in their mind, and ask, look, if mortgage rates went from 800 a month so that now next month I have to pay 1,000 a month, will I still be able to afford this house? Or mortgage rates go drop, okay, of course, if mortgage rates drop, that's great. But we always do our risk analysis in the most adverse direction. So mortgage rates went from 800 a month to say 1,000 a month. Can you still meet your monthly payment with your current level of income, keeping all other variables constant? So back to this, keeping your current financial situation constant. So you're not banking on that promotion at work. That's not necessarily going to happen. Your expenses are still going to be the same as what they are. Can you still make, can you handle that $200 buffer? Okay, so if you can quantify that for yourself and understand your own risk tolerance, this is why I say you'll never have a problem financially because you then won't get yourself into the situation where you, which you cannot handle or that you're not prepared to accept the risk for. Okay. So let's come back to an engineering example. Here's this company. They've got a lower bound of $15 and they're going to sell for $24 and this is giving them an idea of the sensitivity to that variable. Let's uh, take this away for a minute. So that sales price. Let's consider the raw material price. Okay. And let's say the raw material price that gets you an NPV of zero dollars is nine dollars a kilogram. Okay. 
So this is the cost of my raw materials, $9 a kilogram. At, at that value, keeping all other variables constant, keeping my sales price constant, interest rates, uh, tax rates, and so forth. If raw materials increase to $10 a kilogram, so from 9 to 10, which way am I going to go? Down. Down. Okay, so down. And $11, $12, $13. And if raw materials decrease in price, I'm more likely I'm going to make a profit. Okay. So this is typical of all sensitivity analyses. That slope is down for variables that are related to costs. So raw material prices, utility prices, salaries. If those increase in value, this curve heads downwards. If this quantity on the x-axis is an income or related to income, this curve is going to go up. And what we're most interested in is not the fact that it goes down or up, because we know that. Okay. What we're interested in mostly is that steepness of the slope. That's our, that's our criteria. How fast or how, or how steep is that slope? OK, so if my raw materials price decreases, let's say, Let's say my raw materials curve on something like this. And this was a range from zero dollars all the way to twenty dollars. Is that process sensitive to raw materials? Not so much, okay? It's telling me that I it's got a very, very small impact on it on this NPV scale. So even if I even if my price doubled, I'm going to make a loss, but it's not going to be so it's not going to affect me so much. Okay? There'll be let's take another curve. And I, I don't have colored chalk here, so I'll use squares this time. So raw material prices are circles. Let's say my utility costs squares. So I could have that my utility costs do follow something like this. Okay, so so we can see there that my utilities have a far greater effect on my NPV than the raw materials themselves. Okay, that steepness of the slope is far greater for for the utility costs. What would be a graph? Will be like a process where the raw material cost impact is so little. It would be like if you're using a recycled material, so the material comes cheap, but then it's all the other process that affects you. Okay, so the question is, what type of process would would it be where the raw materials have very little cost or little impact on your sensitivity analysis? Any guesses? Yeah. You have a really valuable product. A really valuable product. Yeah. <coughs> That's usually the, the one, right? So where you're in a company or a fortunate position where your, your raw materials can be converted into a final product that's so valuable that it doesn't really matter too much what your raw material prices are. They're, they're, it's, it's, it's pocket change compared to the sales price. Or you get that cost later on probably in the actual processing you, The costs might come in the processing. They may come in upfront costs. So the industry that I'm most familiar with where that happens is the pharmaceutical industry. Their raw materials cost them nothing, but they convert that into super high value product. Their cost comes from patents and overheads and people and research stuff. So, so that's a, but now you're starting to head into the second point. Now there's two variables or three variables at play. We've considered here naively the effect of only one variable. What if there's two variables changing simultaneously or three variables? Yeah. Um, what Okay, what happens at the intersection point? Here, the intersection point has no particular meaning. I've plotted two different quantities. They just happen to be in the same units of dollars per kilogram. <coughs> this is almost never going to happen for, for us. On our x-axis, we could be plotting interest rates, or let me take a more practical example, tax rates. So that if we're investing in Argentina, we might be concerned that the government changed the tax rate from 25% to 30% next year. 
So what's our sensitivity to that? That might be one quantity of interest on the x-axis. Then the raw materials price in dollars per kilogram, where you can't really compare them. Okay. So then we move to the next uh, type of plot. Is we say, well, let's change my x-axis variable to a percentage of the base case. Okay, so let's see how we do that. And I'll do this on the computer here rather, so it's a little cleaner. So if you go to, um, I borrowed the spreadsheet for one of the groups is costing for Argentina. So let's take a look at this. What I've done here is I've plotted the NPV as a function of the sales price. So at $24 a kilogram, you're making an NPV over 10 years of 74 million. This is easy to do in the spreadsheet. You just go change the value of your sales price up and down, and then you can get your NPV changing from low to high. So I'll show that to you just so that uh, the first time we can be aware of it. So this is one of the groups, I forget who, uh, who it is. Uh, they submitted a spreadsheet, so I use this. If I change that sales price there, $24 a kilogram, if I change it down to 20 per kilogram, I can go, look here, NPV is 26 million. So at $20 a kilogram, I make 26 million. Um, and that's, in fact, that number over there. So I simply just go repeat this over and over for a few times, and I can then generate this curve that shows the sales price on the x-axis and NPV on the y-axis. So that zero point is the one that you calculated in this assignment. In fact, that's where you break even. So that's your sales price is your minimum sales price you can tolerate. Then I can go do that for another variable. Let's go take tax rates. So we were concerned that Argentina's tax rate might impact our project. So Argentina's base tax rate, I took as 30%. And then I went down. So as taxes decrease, I'm making more profit. That makes sense. So the government is taxing us less. I'm, like, I'm going to get a, a greater NPV. So as low as 25%, I'm going to make $90 million profit. And then if taxes go up to 35%, I'm going to make that. So I can then generate that curve, taxes versus NPV. Then I can go take production amount. So we had said our base case is 2,000 kilograms per year, per, uh, per day, or I forget what the units were. So 2,000 is my base case. I can go lower and higher. This is, this is an important one. Production rate is a, is a very important one that we always investigate as engineers in our sensitivity analysis. Because what if a section of the plant is down for several weeks? Then your production rate for the year is low. Okay? So that $2,000, uh, 2,000 tons per day, let's say, 2,000 tons per day, I have to be able to still be profitable when my plant is down for maintenance. So I have to be ensure that at some lower level of production, I can still make money because we know that there's going to be periods of time where we shut down for maintenance. So I have to build that into my analysis. I can also be optimistic. Let's assume that I can boost my production rate. So I'm pushing my equipment just a little bit harder. I've perhaps bought equipment that's larger than needed, or I invest in a technology that can that can improve my production amount, or I rely on some smart engineers to come up with a way to get the equipment to produce a little bit more than it otherwise would, well, that's all, all of those are going to boost my NPV up. Okay. So now we've got three different sensitivities to three quantities. Well, how, how can we compare them? Well, it's, it's, we can look at them one at a time, or if we superimpose them all, we can say, well, here's my base case and call that 100%. And then if I change the production rate down by to 90%, change the production rate down to 80% of that base case, change the production rate down to 70% of the base case, or change the production rate up, I can get generate those curves. And then I can superimpose them. This is where you do your sensitivity analysis. So x-axis then is a percentage change relative to base case. That's, that's our x-axis. So that's, that's really important. x-axis is percentage change relative to the base case. And this is what you're going to report in your, in your project. And you'll see then here that 
our process is so insensitive to the raw material costs. We can barely see that sloping down. Our process is also relatively insensitive to the tax rate. Okay? So the base case was 30% tax. That lowest point is when our tax rate is 25%. That's 35% tax. That's a huge, huge variance. Uh, we don't expect the government to be changing the taxes by that much ever in the life of our clients. But despite that, we're still profitable at any level of tax rates. So I'm comfortable to invest in this, in this country, Argentina, because over my expectation of the tax rates, I'm going to be profitable no matter what. I'm comfortable that no matter what the raw material price, I'm going to be profitable. The two things that seem to most impact me are these here, the sales price and the production amount. And in this example, it's contrived, it's artificial. If I increase sales price, um, I'm increasing production amounts. Then production amount increases sales price because I'm assuming everything I produce gets sold. That's not always true. So in this case, those two are superimposed. But this is, that's the principle of sensitivity analysis. Plot on your vertical axis the NPV, on your horizontal axis this percentage change, and find the factors that are most that you're most sensitive to. So several of you will leave here and you'll start your own companies one day. And let's say you start and open a restaurant business. What analysis are you going to do to see if you're profitable? Right. This is it. This is the guy that you do. Number of customers per day. Is, am I sensitive to that or not? Cost of the food in my restaurant. Cost of minimum wage. Minimum wage goes from whatever it is now and maybe goes up to $18. Okay, are you sensitive to that? Okay, so if the, if the taxes change for small businesses, right now the current government has taxes very low, but what if they go up? Okay, so these are all the things you want to understand when you're starting a new venture, purchasing a new house, a new car, or building a new chemical plant. Okay, so same, same principle can be used in, in, in every aspect of your life. Okay, any questions on this? Yeah. So this is just telling you what you're sensitive to, but how does that help you make a decision? Okay, good question. This is telling us what we're sensitive to, how does that help you make a decision? So if you're sensitive to say sales price, if you have major competitors that are like cutting you down, then you're gonna exit the market because you can't physically um, profit off that. Right. So if you're investing in this market and you know that there's competitors that can move their sales price, then you may say, okay, I'm gonna stay away from this project. You might pick an, an alternative project that sales price isn't going to be such a strong factor for you. Okay. It just shows you where your risk is. So if you know certain areas in this project you're willing to accept the risk on, say raw materials, you're willing to accept the risk on that because for whatever reasons you have, um, it'll just show you the different aspects of this project where you can incur the most risk. Right, so let's imagine for a minute that this project was most risky to raw materials. What could you potentially then do to mitigate that risk? Stop pile. Stockpile. Stockpile your raw materials. So you could get an extended contract for a long number of years. Right. You you go and find a supplier and write a five-year contract and to guarantee prices for a for a period of time. Okay? So whenever we have risk, what do we look for? Insurance. Okay? That's they go hand in hand. If you have high risk, you find insurance to mitigate the risk. This is as pretty much as, as simple as that. So that's, this is one key way that this, uh, this can be used to find those sensitivities. Let's take a look at another sensitivity analysis. Um, this type of sensitivity analysis that's shown here is called the break-even analysis. So some of you in the business area have heard of this. A break-even analysis tells you um, where you need to sell your product for in order to make a profit. So we did this a bit in uh, that Argentina question as well. Let's take a look. My horizontal axis is my production rate. That's code for saying sales. Assuming that everything we produce, we're able to sell. 
So it's a key assumption, but fairly reasonable in some, some cases. And what we see then is that my fixed costs are exactly that. They're fixed no matter what the level of production. So these would be buildings, overheads, uh, sales, marketing, insurance, uh, taxes, corporate, uh, not corporate taxes, uh, uh, land taxes and so forth. Okay, so costs that are fixed no matter what your level of production. Then I have my variable costs. These are costs that go up proportionate to my production. So operators, raw material costs, utility costs. Those go up. If I produce more, I need to put in more. And there's a point where the sum of this blue line plus my variable costs meets exactly the revenue from those sales. So at this particular point of production, I'm selling all of that quantity of material. That pink line tells me the revenue I generate from those sales. The blue line is my fixed costs. And the distance between the blue and the green line is my incremental costs, my call my variable costs. So let's take a look at this green line again. At zero production, the green line is telling me my fixed costs plus variable costs is equal to my fixed costs. That makes sense. I've got no variable costs when I'm not producing. As I produce a little bit more, my variable costs increase, and this total sum from the bottom to the green line is my fixed plus variable. When total costs meet total income, that's my breaking even point. Anything after that is profit. Okay, so that's a, that's a straightforward analysis. Now let's kick it up to something that's a little bit more realistic, because that's, that's almost never the case. That curve most often looks something like that. As you produce more, your variable costs don't increase linearly. They increase with this rising rate. Does that make sense? Why might it be like that? Take a minute to talk with someone next to you to see if you can figure out why those costs might increase at that rate.
So we have to boost our, our, our capital costs and our operating costs over there. We may also have to start paying penalties on, um, on our storage and on our raw materials. If we're suddenly demanding new mater more material, we've written a contract for a five-year period. Now we're asking for more. We've got to break our contract, re rewrite it, and um, they're likely going to increase the prices a little bit. So our costs will go up in proportion to our production in this non-linear manner. Um, so pay more for energy costs, we may have to break the cost of our storage contract and then have two storage facilities, the second of which is at a different rate to the first rate. So things don't, don't scale in that linear manner. For our purposes though, we're going to assume fairly straightforward spreadsheets. But this is just an indication here that when you're performing these, these sensitivity analyses, there's often a lot more in that spreadsheet than the simple, straightforward uh, few columns that we've been dealing with. Okay, so a big, big deal in, in financial companies is that these spreadsheets grow to almost unimaginable sizes. This, I've seen some pretty large ones, like 10 megabyte spreadsheets, which account for all these non-linearities and, and unusual variances in the projects. Okay, so just made, that's more of a parenthetical point. Um, I also invite you to take a look at, on your own time, these two curves of sensitivity analysis from Dr. Adams' papers. So he's got this publication out here that shows NPV on the vertical axis as a function of six different strategies for operating an electricity facility, electricity production facility. So six different uh, strategies for operating that facility as a parameter on the curve, and then your horizontal <coughs> axis is the percentage of energy output. That's kind of like your throughput. So if you're operating at 0% throughput or at 100% throughput. Okay? So six different strategies here, and then the fact that there's two graphs are one when electricity is at a lower rate versus a higher rate. So there's so much information in those two, two figures. Right, so we've kicked, he's gone and taken it up from just our case here where we've got a single curve versus MPV. He's now got six curves for six different technologies, production rates on the horizontal axis, and times two for different, uh, for different sales price of electricity. Okay, so a wealth of information on that uh, sensitivity analysis. Take a look at it, and what would your decisions be uh, as a financial analyst if you were evaluating these various electrical production facilities. Okay, so think of that that one in your own time. Okay, so then just to recap our, our approach that we will take in this course and that you'll use in your project is you'll come up with some base case and then vary parameters of interest one at a time so raw materials, capital costs, sales are the three on this curve. There may be five or six that you choose to vary and evaluate the sensitivity of your project to those six parameters. So that's one thing is to generate this curve. And that takes a little bit of work on a spreadsheet. But what takes far more work is then interpreting the results in a, in a sensible manner. So we've, we've had a bit of that discussion in today's class. The final final way just to talk about these uh, sensitivity curves is to consider the situation when we've got two variables changing at a time. So we've looked at one variable changing at a time. If we consider two variables changing at a time, we generate uh, this sort of parameterized curve. So whenever people say there's a parameter on a curve, they're referring to an additional variable. So we've got NPV here on the vertical axis, and then by one parameter is P1. So P1 might be sales price. And the first curve over there just shows as sales price increases, I'm making higher profits of so NPV goes up. Okay? But remember we said we're changing one variable at a time, sales price over here. But what if not only sales price changes, but utility costs? So this is sales price when utilities equals, let's say, for example, $6 per gigajoule. Okay. 
Now, if utilities had to go to $8 per gigajoule and sales prices vary, which of those two curves is it? So utilities are more expensive now. So utilities are now $8 per gigajoule. And I want to see what's the effect of that on NPV when sales price varies. So I can vary my sales price and utilities I expect to change as well. Which of those two curves might it be? Well, there's, there's only two options, right? So let's, let's work it out. Okay, so it's either that one or it's that one. Okay, that's a that's a great way to say it. So I like that. So as utilities go up, so to eight dollars a gigajoule, you need to set your sales price higher to counteract that. Okay, so your sales price has to be higher for for that um, for that process to still be profitable. Okay. So then this parameter would be lower utilities cost. So then, so here we're seeing sensitivity plots with two parameters, sales price and utilities in this particular example, and how it impacts NPV. So that's pretty much the level of complexity you can go to on a 2D curve, on a 2D plot, I should say. So we, we will never investigate three parameters that would be hard to visualize. But in practice, you would understand that multiple parameters are varying, so sales prices, utility prices and salaries might be varying. How do we assess that? Well, then we get into something that's a little bit more messy and they're called scenario analysis. So what you do is you find, find the most probable values of your parameters. So what's the most probable sales price, the most probable utility price, the most probable um, salaries, and then you find combinations <coughs> of best cases and worst cases. So you can go through all the permutations of those and build up multiple scenarios and simply lay them out on a table and evaluate them. So then, then we move from graphical analysis to te table analysis. So again, as you start to see this, um, your expectation is this is something that computers do well. You don't do this by hand. But uh, there's, there's software packages that will do these sensitivity analysis for us um, for given base case and uh, given parameter Value. So what you can typically do is we set, we tell the software what uh, distribution that parameter follows. So does the sales price follow a normal distribution, a uniform distribution? Uh, does the utility price follow a certain distribution? And then let the software pick random combinations of that and then find your expected profitability. So again, something we won't look at in this course, but to be aware of that these, these do exist out there. And that will get you the most complete sensitivity analysis you could look for. This point, though, is fairly far along, right? So as you can imagine, all the work that goes into this, you would do this sort of just before you actually decide to invest or uh, work. It's not something you do early on in a project. In other words. Okay, uh, some key advice here. We vary only the parameters that are likely to influence our decision. Here's, here's an interesting one. Let's go back to the Voyager example where we started this section of uh, the capital cost section. So remember we said uh, Suncor had scrapped the Voyager upgrader project. And they had the, this project had gone on and on. Capital costs had doubled, more than doubled. And time. Time was also a factor. Time to construct the, the process. So that's another interesting variable. How long did it take you to get my process up and running? Those first two years might turn into four years. Are you still going to be able to survive in terms of getting your cash flows right for a two-year construction period versus a four-year construction period? Bearing in mind that during those four years, you're making absolutely no income. Okay, so how sensitive are you? How much risk are you willing to accept making no money for four years versus two years. At some point, you have to start bringing cash in to pay those salaries, but 
uh, we have to be able to judge our level of risk, our level of sensitivity. So I'm hoping that this section kind of pulls in this idea of risk, the idea of uncertainty, and importantly, that it's fairly straightforward to quantify it and analyze for it. Okay, so in our projects that we will be looking at later on, uh, this is slightly incorrect. The design reports will contain all three of, you'll be estimating your capital costs for your project, you'll be estimating manufacturing costs, so raw materials, utilities, salaries. We will leave out the working capital cost estimation. Okay, so omit that. We haven't really spent time focusing on the working capital cost estimation, and it's almost always a small-ish component of, of the estimate anyway. Um, and especially for this flow sheet, there's like very little working capital. So we'll only be looking at capital cost estimations of our, our fixed equipment, of our utilities and ongoing manufacturing costs, and you'll bring those together and perform a time value of money analysis and sensitivity analysis and then convert those numbers into English. Okay, so here's uh, some, some important points for you to, to bear in mind. We report that uh, four weeks from now, explain what your basis is, your error ranges, what are your recommendations from that analysis, and then your sensitivity analysis is, is really essential. So just on that project topic, then while we're at this point, as you noticed in the handout that was on the course website, you will submit your economic analysis to me four weeks from now. So on the 8th of November, you'll submit a spreadsheet of your economic analysis. I'll provide some sort of template guideline for you to follow. And I'll be taking the various groups, capital cost estimates and manufacturing cost estimates. I'll average them out over the, over the various groups that have performed that analysis on the same unit. And I'll return those costs back to you so that then when you combine them, you can perform an economic analysis on the entire flow sheet. So our goal is to get a realistic economic analysis. By breaking the project up into smaller groups, you obviously cannot perform a realistic economic analysis. So this is a way for you to perform an economic analysis that's thorough on the entire flow sheet from beginning to end, taking all incomes into account, all sales into account, and costs into account. So, so that, uh, that's due four weeks from now. There's some other results in, uh, sorry, some other slides here. I won't go through these. These are sort of guidance that Dr. Marlin has put together. If I go through this with you, you'll forget it. And this is the sort of thing you learn by experience. So don't fall in love with the project, etc., etc. et cetera. Et cetera. Uh, don't allow your boss to force your hand and force your decision. This one, good luck with that, because almost always a boss has the, de the decision in mind already. Uh, but it's something to learn that if you can convince them otherwise with hard numbers, that's a great skill to have. And these are the tools you need to do that. Okay, so tomorrow's class will start the safety topic.